ACI Release 5.2 has several service graph and PBR related features. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about PBR destination in an L3 out. For other new features and existing features, please check other documents available on Cisco.com. Prior to release 5.2, PBR destination must be in bridge domain, not in an L3 out. Starting from release 5.2, PBR destination can be in an L3 out, which provides more flexible design options. Let's quickly recap what was the consideration of PBR destination with L3 out. Prior to 4.1, if PBR is enabled, both consumer and provider connectors of the service node must be in bridge domain. Interface cannot be in an L3 out even if PBR is not required on that interface. Starting from 4.1, this limitation was lifted. Even if PBR is enabled on the consumer side, if PBR is not required on the provider side of the last node, it can be in an L3 out instead of a bridge domain. For example, we have a firewall with a source nut. When an endpoint in EPG1 talks to an endpoint in EPG2, traffic is redirected to the consumer side of the firewall using PBR. Then, firewall changes the source IP address and traffic goes to the destination. Return traffic comes back to the source nutted IP behind L3 out. In this case, PBR is not required on the provider side of the firewall. However, this is applicable only when it's the provider side of the last node in a service graph. Starting from 5.0, this limitation was also lifted. Any interface can be in an L3 out if PBR is not enabled on that interface. This is useful for load balancer use case. For example, traffic from EPG1 to BIP we don't need a PBR because traffic is destined to VIP, owned by the load balancer. If VIP is behind the load balancer interface IP, we need L3 out to add the route to that VIP. If load balancer doesn't use source nut, PBR is required on the provider side for the return traffic. In this case, the consumer side of the load balancer is in an L3 out, whereas PBR is enabled on the provider side. Key point here is that PBR destination still needs to be in a bridge domain, not an L3 out. So that's the limitation prior to 5.2. Finally, starting from 5.2, this limitation is also lifted. PBR destination can be in an L3 out instead of a bridge domain. One use case is the use of the same firewall for both north-south and east-west traffic. For external to internal north-south traffic, you want to use a perimeter firewall as external routers connected through L3 out. Firewall has two interfaces. One is connected to ACI fabric through L3 out. The other is connected to external network outside of ACI fabric. At the same time, you want to inspect east-west traffic by using the same firewall interface, which means PBR destination needs to be in an L3 out. Configuration-wise, it will be two contracts. Contract 1 between EPG1 and EPG2 redirects traffic to the firewall using PBR. Contract 2 between L3 out EPG and internal EPGs just permit traffic. The second use case is one arm mode load balancer connected through L3 out. As I mentioned in previous slide, traffic destined to VIP doesn't require PBR. For return traffic, PBR is required if the load balancer doesn't use the source now. If load balancer has another interface in a BD we can enable PBR for return traffic on the interface in a bridge domain. However, if the load balancer has just one interface, 
TBR destination needs to be in an L3 out. In terms of configuration, there is no new configuration option. In device selection policy on APIC, we select network-related configurations for the service node interface. For example, whether we use bridge domain or L3 out for that interface, selecting PBR policy to specify PBR destinations, and so on. In previous release, we must select bridge domain to select PBR policy. Now we can select L3 out instead of bridge domain along with PBR policy. Even with virtual service node, for the service device interface in L3 out, you need to configure where it's connected in ACI fabric as part of L4 L7 device configuration. This path information should be matched with the path configuration in the L3 out logical interface profile. If it doesn't match, you will see the faults. Service graph instantiation will be failed. The L3 out for PBR destination must be in either consumer or provider VRF. You can't use another VRF that is not involved in the contract. You can use L3 out with SVI, routed sub-interface, or routed interface, but not floating SVI or other specific type of L3 outs. This feature is not supported in multi site. IPS area tracking must be enabled for the PBR destinations. These existing PBR related features are supported same with PBR destinations in bridge domain. For more detail, please check the deployment guide and white paper. Thank you for watching.